Hey everyone, this is Pete, and welcome to Atari A to Z Flashback, a series of short playthroughs of the games on the Atari Flashback Classics collection for Nintendo Switch. This is a compilation of 150 games incorporating Atari arcade games, Atari 2600 console games, and Atari 5200 console games. Uh, it's actually also a compilation of the three individual Atari Flashback Classics compilations that have previously been released on PlayStation 4 and Xbox One, but all bundled into one convenient package, which is lovely. Um, so what we're going to do in this is we're going to work our way through all the games in here, one video at a time. Uh, we're going to be beginning with the arcade games and then moving on to the console games after we've gone through all of those. And uh, we'll just be doing a short playthrough and an explanation of each uh, of uh, what is going on with each. And so we start right at the top with Asteroids. So Asteroids um, hails from 1979. It's one of the earliest arcade games or one of the earliest successful arcade games. Um, and it was designed as... Um, a response to a couple of things really so it was it was developed partly out of the technology uh, that built the game Lunar Lander and it was also designed to uh, incorporate elements of Space Invaders which was obviously very successful and influential at the time as well so the concept of eliminating threats and being able to make progress by sort of successfully clearing your way out of a dangerous situation um, very much inspired this game in the first place. So, Asteroids is most well known for sort of battling against the asteroids. It does have a few hostile aliens, but the focus is very much in dealing with what is not an inherently hostile threat, which makes it quite an interesting concept in many ways. So you're just, in effect, attempting to survive against the elements almost. Now, there have been various ports of Asteroids over the years and we'll see both the Atari 2600 and the Atari 5200 version a bit later in this series, but this is the original arcade version which made use of vector graphics rather than the more common um, bitmap raster graphics. And the decision to use vector graphics was um, partly born out of the the desire to sort of build on the concept used in Lunar Lander. So that's where the physics model and stuff came from in this. Um, but also simply because vector graphics, it's incredibly high resolution, allows for much greater precision than was afforded by the low resolution raster displays at the time. So in comparison to the games that sort of made use of traditional pixel art at the time, Asteroids was completely pin sharp it was a beautiful looking and it still is a beautiful looking game beautiful in its simplicity and you'll see sort of the precision with which you can move your ship the fact that you can rotate it so smoothly without it being dependent on individual frames of animation it's actually just a shape being rotated if you can hear weird noises outside, by the way, my wife is building something in the garden, so I do apologise in advance for that if you can hear that. But yeah, Asteroids is a game that, personally speaking, I've never been a huge fan of, really. Um, but that's mostly because when I was growing up, I wasn't particularly good at it. I've always found the sort of turn and thrust control to be quite a challenge in many ways. In 2D anyway, I'm absolutely fine with it in a 3D environment, but I always find this sort of top-down thrust and move mechanics as introduced by Asteroids and later popularised by games like Thrust and a whole bunch of others. I always found that quite challenging, although saying that, this playthrough we're doing today, I think this is probably the best I've ever done. I, I'm finding it difficult to recall a time that I ever actually successfully scored an extra life in Asteroids, for one thing. But Asteroids is obviously a very influential game for a lot of reasons, so... 
a lot of modern shooter maps, particularly sort of twin stick single screen shooter maps, can sort of trace their heritage back to asteroids in many ways. So if you look at something like, I don't know, like Geometry Wars, while that doesn't play in the exact same way as Asteroids does, in that it's a twin stick shooter rather than a rotate and fire shooter, there's a lot in common. It's got the vector style graphics, it's got enemies that split apart when you shoot them, it's got the sort of explosion effects of things shattering into pieces. So sort of just a just a general style of presentation in a lot of cases owes a lot to asteroids. So we'll see how we get on with this today. Got eleven thousand three hundred and sixty points to beat. I think the thing that I always found kind of difficult with the control scheme in Asteroids in the past was sort of being precise with it. Not in terms of like rotation and aiming and stuff, but in terms of the actual movement. And I think the important thing to remember when you're playing a game like this is just not to overdo the controls. Because if you start thrusting too much and flying all over the screen at high speed, it's very difficult to change direction effectively and steer exactly where you want to go. And there's no brake button in Asteroids. I mean, you've got your you've got your hyperspace button. Which sends you to a random location on screen. Which is not always beneficial, but... Does that bring you to a dead stop? Let's find out. Let's go at high speed. See there, I hyperspaced and went straight into an Asteroid. So, that's uh, <laughs> not always a get-out-of-jail-free card. So, that was less good, wasn't it? Still got a high score, though, because I haven't recorded any high scores on this yet. Hey! <laughs> oh, dear. I'm not looking at the leaderboards, though. That would just be depressing. Let's have one more go at this. So, as I say, we're playing the Atari Flashback Classics version of this on Switch, uh, which incorporates uh, a number of interesting features. So you've got the arcade bezel art around the outside, which is lovely. That's all lovely and high res and looks nice in both uh, both on the docks TV mode and in handheld mode. You've actually got a surprising amount of display options as well in terms of emulation. So at the moment we're displaying the vector graphics just sort of in their purest form. Um, but you can actually set them to simulate the glow effect of a traditional vector monitor to various degrees. Obviously, it's not 100% authentic because you, you're not actually running it on an original vector monitor, but it's nice to have the option to uh, to put that in there as well. And elsewhere in the collection, you've got things like the option to uh, turn on or off uh, sprite flickering in 2600 games, and whether or not to use scan lines on raster-based games and such like. So I tend to prefer sort of the the purest possible presentation when I'm playing these games. So making these games look the best they possibly can, rather than necessarily exactly how they looked back in the day. Different people feel different different things about that. I know there's a lot of people out there who really like scanline filters, but I've never been a huge fan of them. And the controls are nicely customizable too. So I'm using a Nintendo Switch Pro controller for this. Which feels very nice. So we've got a nice responsive D-pad. Got nice clicky clunky buttons to use. You can actually use the analog stick if you want to as well, but uh, given the sort of oops, given the sort of digital nature of movement in asteroids, you probably won't get any real benefit from that unless you specifically prefer using a joystick to um, to using digital controls. Oops. So Asteroids is sort of iconic in terms of its visual presentation, but a lot, a lot of its sound effects are very well known as well, so... Oh no. 
So there's the common joke about whenever you see or hear a, a video game in a movie or a TV series, it's always making use of old arcade game noises and not anything that's actually up to date, which is sort of understandable in a way because a lot of up to date video games are sort of indistinguishable from from movies and TV shows because they use a lot of speech, they use a lot of pre-recorded music and orchestral soundtracks and that sort of thing. And so if you really want to sort of highlight the the feeling of video game, it kind of makes sense to go back to the dawn of the genre, even if it doesn't make a lot of sense if you're setting something in present day or the future. But uh, so the asteroid sound effects are ones that are used a great deal. Space Invader sound effects as well. Very common. Oh, I shot myself there. <laughs> That's good. But yeah, they're, they're just sounds that even people who haven't been gaming for very long can associate with video games and arcade games. They're instantly recognisable. They're iconic. They're a, an audible signifier that people understand. People know that when you hear that sort of pew 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 noise, we're talking about a video game. And even stuff like that repetitive background sound that we got in here, which is sort of a bit of ha bit of a hangover from the game's inspiration from Space Invaders in many ways. That feeling of rising tension, almost like an accelerating heartbeat. I never quite understood what that sound was supposed to be, really. Because obviously asteroids don't make a noise by themselves. Because if we're being picky, nothing should make a noise, really, because we're in space. But, you know... We've always sort of suspended that particular aspect of our disbelief when uh, when dealing with video games. Well, I'm never going to beat that high score, am I? Never mind. Anyway, that's Asteroids from 1979. I hope you enjoyed that. We'll continue taking a look at the rest of the games in this series over the coming weeks. Beginning with the sort of follow-up to Asteroids, Asteroids Deluxe. Which I'm sure will be very different from what we've got here. <laughs> All right, as always, thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you again next time. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please help out the channel by leaving a like or a comment and subscribing. New episodes of Atari A to Z are on Tuesdays and Atari ST A to Z on Thursdays. Check out Atari A to Z .wordpress.com for a full archive. Do please also check out my other projects, moegamer.net, where I explore Japanese and Japanese-inspired games from yesterday and today, and videopackgames.wordpress.com, which aims to catalogue the small but well-formed library of the Philips G7000 Video Pack Computer, also known as the Magnavox Odyssey 2. You can also support my work on Patreon, or buy me a coffee. You can find links to do both down in the video description. Thanks again, and I'll see you next time. Thank you.